Welcome! The feedback from the community about the removal of maps has been huge, both on my video about those changes and directly to Ubisoft. They also said during the Pro League final that now when they're back at the office in Montreal after Gamescom, they will have a look at all the feedback and see if they need to change anything. A lot of people are very angry about the removal of maps and the separate ranked and casual map pools. In my video I gave balancing issues and also how dynamic the maps are in sense of for example vertical gameplay between different floors as the two main reasons for removing the maps and changing the ranked and casual map pools. But I did not have any exact data on how balanced the different maps are and I only went on my personal feeling after playing the game a lot. But thanks to Remorse, I got in touch on Twitter with the user Extra, who have used the data from the data dump Ubisoft released for the year 2 season 1, so that's Velvet Shell. He have done a graph that shows you the win percentages for defenders on different maps. In this data, it's only included where at least 8 of the 10 players are platinum or diamond, so that's the 4 top ranks in this game. And as you can see here in the graph, there are some big differences between the maps. If we for example highlight the 9 maps that will be in the ranked pool now, we see that they are all in the middle and have extremely balanced win slash loss ratio. But you have two exceptions here that have very balanced win loss ratios but still excluded from the ranked playlist. Ubisoft have not said an exact reason for this, but just as I talked about in my last video, I think this is due to lack of dynamic plays on those maps. Both Hereford Base and Plane are very limited when it comes to vertical play and also a lot of the walls are not breachable. That makes it hard for both the attackers and defenders to be creative and come up with new stuff. If we then highlight the two maps that were removed, we see that they are both very unbalanced and that's why I think they got removed from the game. And the win-loss ratio is very important in a game like Siege. For example, on Barlet University, defenders win almost 60% of the rounds. That means if you're for example going to overtime but you get to attack 2 of the 3 rounds, you only have around 40% chance to win that match. They want the player's skill to determine who wins the match, not just by luck who gets to defend twice in overtime. I'm pretty sure this data and how dynamic the maps are were key when Ubisoft took the decision on what maps to remove and what maps should be played in ranked. If we look at CSGO, that is one of the biggest competitors of Siege as a competitive 5v5 shooter. Here's a graph from HLTV that you can see how often different maps are being played and you can clearly see that 8 maps are getting almost all the action among the pros and 2 really stick out at the top. CSGO does pretty well even if they have a limited amount of maps being played competitive. And if we look at the win rates on those maps in CSGO, we see the same thing as we do in Siege on the competitive maps. The top 5 most played maps have a CT win rate between 49.3 and 54.22. Competitive games need competitive and balanced maps. I thought that I should answer some of the more common questions here in this video. I also want to make it 100% clear that the fact that they are removed now doesn't mean they will never be back. Ubisoft specifically said that some of the maps being removed from the game will be redesigned and then released again. So we could for example see Favela return in a future update with a new level design to make it more balanced. Also, the maps that are being removed is not being deleted from the game, they're just being removed from the playlist of casual and ranked. If you want to play them in terrorist hunt or custom game with your friends, they're still available for example right now on the TTS that has a new patch, you can still go in and play those maps in custom games and in terrorist hunt. I saw a lot of comments saying stuff like Ubisoft only does this to make the pro league teams happy and that the pro teams is just a minority of the players. It's true that the pro teams is only a minority of the players, but this change has nothing to do with the pro players. When the pro teams want to practice, they do custom games to scrim. For example, in Pro League, they also have different game settings than you have in Ranked. They don't see, for example, points when you injure somebody. So Ranked is not the same as Pro League, even with this change. So this has nothing to do with pleasing the Pro League teams. This is a way to get the game more competitive for every gamer, even if you're Silver or Diamond. This change will make Ranked more competitive and fair with balanced map. The reason the ranked map pool is the same as the Pro League is simply because that's the 9 most competitive, dynamic and well-balanced maps. 
Another common question is they could at least kept favela and yacht in the casual mode. Well, I can really understand this argument, but I still think this was the right move from Ubisoft. They don't want casual to be unbalanced either, and with only first to three rounds in casual, that makes the impact of poorly balanced map even higher. They also need to spend time maintaining a map, tweaking it, checking for bugs with new operators and so on. And with a new map and two new operators coming every quarter, it would take up too much time to redesign every map to make it fit the new meta and all the gadgets that new operators will bring. I also saw people saying that they paid money for these DLCs and now they're taking that content away, but that's just not true. You never paid anything for the maps. The maps are always free for everybody from day one. With season passes, you just get the operators early and free. But okay, how can we solve this and what will happen in the future? I think now with the new map pools, Ubisoft must make the casual game mode even better. A lot of people still want to play for example Plane or House, and a lot of players want to just play the game and not be so competitive all the time. But for those players, the casual mode is pretty limited as of now. I would like to see a few changes coming into casual mode, it will make this a much better game mode for everybody. First, make both the attackers and defenders able to shoot spawn point and objective. Right now. It's a total joke where one team for example can get armory and border and the next team gets to defend bathroom tellers. This needs to be fixed to get the balancing issues. I also think they should insert some sort of map voting system in the end of every game. They should also make it first of 4 rounds or 6 if it goes overtime, just as in ranked. When it's only first to 3 and you spend more time searching for games, getting into games, than actually playing the game. This way, I think casual would be a much better play mode, even if you just want to play super casual late night for example. That way you can have a night where you just feel like playing casual because you want to play different maps. Then when you're in the mood for some competitive gameplay, you can go into ranked that will be more competitive and more balanced than ever. Also, I think it's a matter of time before Barlet University will be removed or at least redesigned. You just can't have a map with almost 60% win rate for the defenders in this game, not even in casual. When playing on the TTS servers, we actually got to play the new map theme park in ranked. I'm not sure if that's just Ubisoft trying to get as much data on as possible for bug testing, or if they changed their mind and lifted the new map into ranked. We will just have to wait and see about that. Do you agree with me or what's your opinion about this? And if you have to remove one map, what map would that be? Please let me know down in the comments. And if you liked the video, please hit like. And if you're new to this channel, don't forget to hit subscribe. I will see you next time when I'm back with even more Rainbow Six Siege videos.